Soprano with me, Florence. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's lovely to have you. Now, tonight's story is The Story of Baba the Little Elephant by Jean de Brunoff. In the great forest, a little elephant was born. His name was Baba. His mother loved him dearly and used to rock him to sleep with her trunk, singing to him softly the while. Baba grew fast. Soon he was playing with the other baby elephants. He was one of the nicest of them. Look at him digging in the sand with a shell. One day Baba was having a lovely ride on his mother's back when a cruel hunter hiding behind a bush shot at them. He killed Baba's mother. The monkey hid himself, the birds flew away and Baba burst into tears. The hunter ran up to catch poor Baba. Baba was very frightened and ran away from the hunter. After some days, tired and footsore, he came to a town. He was amazed, for it was the first time he had ever seen so many houses. What strange things he saw. Beautiful avenues, motor cars and motor buses. But what interested Baba most of all? was two gentlemen he met in the street. He thought to himself, what lovely clothes they have got. I wish I could have some too, but how can I get them? Luckily, he was seen by a very rich old lady who understood little elephants and knew at once that he was longing for a smart suit. She loved making others happy, so she gave him her purse. Thank you, madam, said Baba. Without wasting a moment, Baba went into a big shop. He got into the lift. It was so much fun going up and down in this jolly little box that he went ten times to the very top and ten times down again to the bottom. He was going up once more when the lift boy said to him, Sir, this is not a toy. You must get out now and buy what you want. Look, here is the shop walker. Then he bought a shirt, collar and tie, a suit of a delightful green colour. Next, a lovely bowler hat and finally shoes and spats. Baba was so pleased with his purchases and satisfied with his appearance that he paid a visit to the photographer. And here is his photograph. Baba went to dinner with his friend, the old lady. She too thought he looked very smart in his new suit. After dinner, he was so tired that he went early to sleep. Baba made his home in the old lady's house. Every morning they did their exercises together and then Baba had his bath. Every day he drove out in the car that the old lady had bought him. She gave him everything that he wanted. A learned professor gave him lessons. Baba was attentive and always gave the right answer. He was a most promising pupil. In the evenings after dinner, he told the old lady's friends all about his life in the great forest. And yet, Baba was not altogether happy. He could no longer play about in the great forest with his little cousins and his friends, the monkeys. He often gazed out of the window, dreaming of his childhood. And when he thought of his dear mother, he used to cry. Two years passed by. One day he was out for a walk when he met two little elephants with no clothes on. Why? Here are Arthur and Celeste, my two little cousins, he cried in amazement to the old lady. Baba hugged Arthur and Celeste and took them to buy some lovely clothes. Next, he took them to a tea shop where they had some delicious cakes. Meanwhile, in the great forest, all the elephants were searching for Arthur and Celeste and their mothers grew more and more anxious. Luckily, an old bird flying over the town had spied them and hurried back to tell the elephants. The mothers went to the town to fetch Arthur and Celeste. They were very glad when they found them, but they scolded them all the same for having run away. Baba made up his mind to return to the great forest with Arthur and Celeste and their mothers. The old lady helped him to pack. When everything was ready for the journey, Baba kissed his old friend goodbye. If he had not been so sorry to leave her, he would have been delighted to go home. He promised to come back to her and never to forget her. 
off they went. There was no room for the mother elephants in the car, so they ran behind, lifting their trunks so as not to breathe in the dust. The old lady was left alone, sadly thinking, when shall I see my little Barbar again? Alas, that very day the king of elephants had eaten a bad mushroom. It had poisoned him. He had been very ill and then he had died. It was a terrible misfortune. After his funeral, the oldest elephants met together to choose a new king. Just at that moment, they heard a noise and turned round. What a wonderful sight they saw. It was Barbar arriving in his car with all the elephants running and shouting. Here they are, here they are, they have come back. Hello Barbar, hello Arthur, hello Celeste, what lovely clothes, what a beautiful car. Then Cornelius, the oldest elephant of all, said in his quavering voice, My dear friends, we must have a new king. Why not choose Barbar? He has come back from the town where he has lived among men and learned much. Let us offer him the crown. All the elephants thought that Cornelius had spoken wisely and they listened eagerly to hear what Barbar would say. I thank you all, said Barbar, but before accepting the crown, I must tell you that on our journey in the car, Celeste and I got engaged to be married. If I become your king, she will be your queen. Long live Queen Celeste, long live King Barbar, the elephants shouted with one voice. And that was how Barbar became king. Cornelius, said Barbar, you have such good ideas that I shall make you a general. And when I get my crown, I will give you my hat. In a week's time, I'm going to marry Celeste. We will give a grand party to celebrate our marriage and our coronation. And Barbar asked the birds to take invitations to all the animals and he told the dromedary to go to the town to buy him some fine wedding clothes. The guests began to arrive. The dromedary bought the clothes just in time for the ceremony. After the wedding and the coronation, everyone danced merrily. The party was over. Night fell and the stars came out. The hearts of King Barbar and Queen Celeste were filled with happy dreams. Then all the world slept. The guests had gone home, very pleased and very tired after dancing so much. For many a long day, they will remember that wonderful ball. Then King Barbar and Queen Celeste set out on their honeymoon in a glorious yellow balloon to meet with new adventures. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. But now it is time for bed. So I will see you again for another story corner with Florence. But for now, sleep tight. Bye. It's so